Hi, this is Manos Boulakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. It's a great pleasure to introduce again Dr. Carl Alasvad, who is the director of the Henry Ford Hospital Cardiac Cath Lab. Dr. Alasvad has tremendous experience in complex PCI and CTO, and he's going to present case 58 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. Carl, thank you very much. Thanks, Manos, um, for giving me this opportunity to present uh, one of um, the cases we did recently at Henry Ford Hospital. Uh, Kind of in a clinical background, this is a patient who uh, had significant uh, valvular heart disease, already had a cabbage. He's in his uh, 50. I forgot to mention uh, that uh, his uh, creatinine is actually 2.7. And um, and uh, he received a TAVR and a structural heart team sent him to us because he continued to have angina and he had a, a CTO of the RCA. So this is um, this is all the RCA angiogram I have, um, uh, 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 and for this patient, he had a aortic root angiogram that shows that the RCA is completely occluded, and there is a shadow of a stent there. There are shadow of stents in SVGs and and in left main. So uh, he had a patent left main into a literally a large first septal. The, uh, LAD is actually uh, uh, grafted, and I think the graft is uh, pain to that LAD. SVG to the CERC is providing collaterals to the distal CERC, and um, the Lima shot is uh, showing that the LAD with not much collaterals to the RCA. This is SVG to diagonal with no collaterals to the RCA. So this patient basically um, ambiguous proximal cap, obviously. Uh, very long occlusion, you only can see a little bit of the RCA, uh, poor distal targets, and uh, very good collaterals. So this is the patient um, is a good uh, setup and, and a good candidate for a primary retrograde technique, especially that he has a flush osteal occlusion. So we used uh, a Xi'an wire in uh, addition to a Turnpike LP in the first septal, and this is a real-time crossing uh, into the CERC. We advanced the uh, uh, retrograde um, microcatheter all the way to the proximal RCA. If you notice, we have um, AL.75 with side, hole, uh, side holes guide sitting and waiting in, uh, in the aorta. Uh, uh, my hope was to cross retrograde and basically snare the wire because we don't even have an integrate picture of the RCA. However, uh, as uh, usual, that uh, not, nothing goes as smooth as expected. The wire will go outside the stent, and we tried several wires, and still the wire continued to go outside the stent retrograde. Now we did a, a, a cine run, and here looking at the stent more approximately, I changed the uh, guide from AL1. Uh, or AL.75 to JR4 and the reason because this is easy to trying to find the flush occlusion after multiple attempts retrograde I try to uh, go integrate uh, integrate this time and I needed to engage the RCA or at least what I thought is the RCA osseum I think we got it here the stent was a good marker but there is a distance between the stent and the osseum and, and the guide and the stent has a, a fracture which uh, from my experience makes um, the CTO a lot more difficult and uh, in uh, a lot of times you actually have to rotablate these uh, fractured uh, stents to be able to uh, cross the lesion or expand it. <clears throat> so we tried integrate. Uh, we did not really have much support. We tried um, using um, a, a new microcatheter called Turnpike Gold that it literally screws in and we did not really have much um, uh, success trying to get enough uh, guide support. I actually went down to six French guide catheter and the reason is I thought six French might uh, engage deeper in whatever nubbing uh, there for the RCA and but that didn't work. We tried um, uh, really very uh, strong um, wires integratedly and we couldn't. We went back to trying the retrograde and still we could not get inside the stent. Um, we finally decided to go outside the stent retrograde and I'm trying here uh, uh, another very supportive wire, uh, another supportive wire. I actually tried the Stato wire uh, integratedly and a Stato went farther, but I could not do anything with it. 
so uh, again try and retrograde and the wire now going still outside the stent but the, from um, the, the inferior aspect of the stent and I tried the Astato wire here it actually went farther but I could not advance anything uh, behind the wire to be able to go through the stent um, again this is the Astato wire integrally if you notice the tip of it is damaged this is a 20 gram wire uh, trying to kind of puncture through and the turnpike gold behind it and it would not uh, go so finally um, uh, I'm in a center where we have an experience in using the electrocautery in puncturing from the IVC to the abdominal aorta for a transcable access so I uh, leveraged the, the experience of one of my colleagues came in a lab and we did this together if you notice uh, this is a, a uh, electrocautery uh, activation or we call bovi activation and if you notice the tip of the catheter is melted away um, I think um, this was um, a careful microcatheter uh, and um, and it has metal in it you, when you use the bovi uh, uh, you need the wire to be covered and you probably should stay um, uh, less time on a cautery just in a few bursts of a few seconds but if you notice the wire would not even advance and what we did here we um, cut the tip of the Confianza Pro 12 wire to make it even uh, uh, more uh, uh, penetration and it would not advance um, instead the microcatheter melted away and actually pushed back and if you notice we have um, a gooseneck um, sitting waiting in the aorta we were hoping to kind of puncture through and snare the wire and pull it uh, pull it out and um, this is here another uh, try we changed the, um, the retrograde microcatheter to actually fine cross or micro 14 uh, catheter that has a plastic body that will insulate the wire and here we thought the wire might have gone through but it's actually it did not when we looked into orthogonal views the wire was still in the wall of the aorta so um, I decided to advance um, a two millimeter balloon retrograde and it crushed the stint from the outside um, uh, to be able to kind of advance the gear integratedly um, the balloon stuck in almost in the, in, in the middle of the RCA um, uh, and a close to the proximal RCA I went back and tried integrate and actually uh, to my surprise there was I was able to advance the wire so although we could not really puncture with the um, electrocautery uh, a retrograde but this activations um, uh, softened the tissue around the stent not inside the stent and we were able now to advance the gear integratedly I advanced the wire, um, advanced the wire as far as I uh, could. If you notice, the guide is not even engaged. The microcatheter is just sitting outside the vessel, but I have the wire there. So what I did, I leveraged the retrograde balloon to trap uh, the integrated wire. So I inflate it, and that uh, gave me uh, enough support to basically engage better with the guide um, and advance 1.5 by 20 millimeter balloon integrate. We did, um, unfortunately, we did not record it, but we did a confluent balloon inflation. This is one of them. Uh, and we uh, uh, end up uh, doing um, a draft technique to trying to pull the wire in the guide. The wire, I think, uh, went into the aorta and uh, we end up snaring uh, and um, we finished uh, the case uh, in an uh, in, um, uh, usual fashion. This is uh, after we deployed distal stent and now we are deploying more proximal stent. Uh, if you notice, the old uh, osteal RCA stent so is partly uh, squished and partially uh, uh, open, so we might be inside and outside that stent. This is an intravascular ultrasound, and it's kind of interesting uh, uh, views. So this is a distal stent. I'm seeing here it's well deployed. Normally, when I have a, a stent failure, uh, previous stent failure, I always perform intravascular ultrasound to understand the mode of failure so we can avoid it and um, avoid especially endersizing. So this is a, a, the crushed stent, old stent to the side, uh, completely crushed to the side and partially um, 
we are through it through the uh, the barrel of the stent partially but mostly outside the stent the wire is outside the stent <clears throat> so uh, we stented the ostium now this is a stent inside the old stent and um, we performed osteal flash to uh, kind of ensure uh, uh, that uh, we have access to the RCA in, in case of restenosis, especially in this is a very difficult anatomy. So this is the picture, and if you notice here, there is not much flow in the distal RCA and in the PDA. This is a known phenomenon. Uh, it's a negative remodeling, and you need to deal with this negative remodeling. Uh, and simply, you can actually give. Uh, vasodilators, you can give uh, adenosine, I've been giving uh, nipride and adenosine and nicardipine and nitroglycerin, but a lot of times you have basically touch it up uh, with a uh, balloon. This is two millimeter by four millimeter balloon for a prolonged inflation to just kind of release the spasm in the distal circulation. And this is basically the final picture. Uh, we obtained um, a Timmy 3 flow on all branches. The PDA still has a lesion. Uh, and there is actually a follow-up for this case. Hey, Carl, thank you very much. I mean, actually, I'm amazed at your persistence in sticking through this. This is like an unbelievable case that you're able to do all these things. So a couple of things for people who don't do this, and very few people have done it in the world. I think one of the very few who have done it. Any tips and tricks? So before you do the burning, um, how, how much wire do you have sticking out? And you say you cut the Confianza Pro 12 for, before doing that. Yeah. So, so it's very important when you activate the bovary. So what happened, you take a long wire and don't take a short wire because you want to puncture with it and you might have to sneer it. So I take a confidence of 300 centimeter. This is one of the few occasions I, I do that. And you go with a hemostat and the back of the wire, you can tie it to the, uh, the bovary uh, needle and you just hold them together and of course you make sure that you don't not touching any uh, wet towels on the back table is very important you put your bovie at a cut and you try to go with the lowest energy possible like you start with 10 energy possible and you can go up to 50 but you have to go incrementally so uh, the micro catheter should be completely plastic so it should be insulating I don't think we should use it with a Corsair because the Corsair is actually metal um, or even Turnpike. Uh, I, I think it's also metal, although these micro catheters are coated from the inside and the outside. But I, I think you, we should use it with either um, Fine Cross uh, or Micro 14 or even over the wire balloon if you don't have those in your lab. So um, the, the Confianza Pro 12 is a 12 gram tip, 12.1 gram tip. So if you cut it, you actually weaponize it even more. You need to have it sticking out of the tip of the catheter a little bit and you activate and you shouldn't activate for a long time because it's actually, uh, there is a lot of heat generated. So you need, you need enough energy and enough power to puncture. You don't want to melt the tissue. So you should very short burst and very and if it didn't respond you cannot stop and you need two operators one operator to activate the electric artery and one operator uh, to push so uh, and you have to synchronize and work on it so you say activate and de uh, and deactivate or stop uh, whatever you guys can agree on in the cath lab uh, so you can have short burst and and um, and this is how it got done I think in this case, we um, even used the Astaro wire, which is 20 gram tip, but we did not cut the tip of it, but we used the Confianza. And uh, it didn't work to puncture, but it's actually it created space to uh, advance. So it's kind of, so to speak, this is um, our cart um, or cartery assisted reverse cart. It's funny, we had the Carlino, Carlino um, like the modification of the minimal space. Now you have a new technique. The cautery modification of the submitting space. <laughs> so that's a completely new category of technique there. I know. And then the last thing, I know you crash the stand, and that's happening increasingly. What is your experience with those crash stands? Do they do okay? Do they have restenosis or no major problem so far? So, first of all, like if you can avoid crushing a stand, um, uh, it, it's okay. I don't really have a large number of those. I have so far about three or four patients. They did okay. Um, if I had not done uh, electrocautery in that area, 
I would like to actually burr the stent out. I, I, I think an old underdeployed stents need to kind of be modified significantly. And I lately actually used, um, uh, um, I, I used to use road ablation a lot in, in these uh, um, old stents. But lately, although it's kind of off-label use, I use the CSI because if you have three millimeter stent in a 4.5 millimeter vessel and the stent is under deployed, you're not going to get it with two millimeter burr even, and unless you have a lot of wire bias, which is it. So I think the CSI, and, uh, which is orbital atherectomy, worked really fine um, during uh, inside an old stent. However, if you have a dissection in a vessel, like in this situation, I don't, I don't think the orbital atherectomy is the way to go. I think if you want to rotoblade this stent, you should use just ather like uh, regular atherectomy, directional atherectomy, uh, not directional, rotational atherectomy that actually can at least disrupt it. But in this situation, we actually deployed outside the stent, so we didn't need to do that. <clears throat> Thanks again for an amazing case. No problem.